All right, YouTube, it's time for an update. It's been a while. I know, I know, I know. Um, but, you know, there's I can either make videos or work on the facility I'm building down here, and so any spare time I get generally goes to building. But um, I'm really close now, so I want to show you what I've got done. And then I went ahead and placed an order for fish. I should be getting a lot of fish in in oh, a week or two. We're still settling on the... Uh, import date, but I'll tell you which fish I decided to bring in um, after I show you kind of what I've got done. So here we go. All right, so these are all 20 longs here. These are old tanks I've had for a long time. I don't have any light on them or anything, but I do have them up and running um, and cycling. So there's six of those. That's just, I had them around, so I threw them up. Um, and then here's the 30 breeders. There's three up here which are cracked, um, these first three here. So there's nothing going on in there yet until I can repair them. I cracked them when I was drilling the tanks. Got a video on that if you wanna see how to drill tanks and how not to drill tanks. I did it both ways. <laughs> so, and then, um, but the rest of them that aren't cracked, uh, so there's 12 of them up and running, are up and running. Um, it's just a, a simple sponge filter, um, simple beams work lights, and I, I know I've got to route the cords and everything. I just threw these up there um, real quick like yesterday just to see if the lights would work and get everything going. So I have to reroute all the lights and put them on timers and all that. So we'll get, we'll get that done. But for now, they're up and running enough to be cycling. And then um, to show you show you this maybe this is how this is how the water comes in move this light <clears throat> and okay great so the water uh, one thing I love about these plastic lids is I can drill holes in them super easy so the water comes in on that little bugger right there um, little drip system piece little elbow and that squirts the water away from the um, drain so that the new water coming in doesn't drain off automatically when I'm doing the auto water changes. So that is all set up, which is fantastic. The system's been running a while now. I'm not running the auto ch water changes at the moment um, just because just because I am cycling the tanks and so I um, have run the auto water change system enough that I know that it'll work and I know how much has changed each day uh, approximately 75 to 100 percent every day will change and um, so now I have that shut off and I'm just running the filters I've put in the ammonium chloride to do uh, fishless cycling and I've also used Dr. Tim's Aquatics uh, live nitrifying bacteria the only one on the market that I think works um, and the reason is if you go to his website I'll let you look at why um, he's got a PhD in this area he found the correct bacteria he cultures it it's different than what anyone else uses it's the one that actually grows in fish tanks as opposed to the one that grows in sewer treatment plants and things like that so I've tested it in the past and it worked really well I was able to get tanks up and running in about five days um, fully cycled processing through ammonia in 24 hours after that so that's what I use um, so anyway that's the 30 gallons and then over here I've got I'm really excited about this these are the five and a half gallons there's ten of them set up right now um, I have space for 11 more up top here which I'll get to but these are all up and going the lids are in the mail um, I have twin wall polycarbonate the same stuff that I'm using over here in the mail so that I can uh, get lids on these because with the furnace uh, in the air exchanger in this room it's actually fairly dry down here so this water evaporates super fast <laughs> I have to actually kind of top it off every day because otherwise the filters won't work because enough water evaporates that, uh, that the uplift tubes can't handle it so those those lids are coming soon as soon as I get those I won't have that problem anymore but these are all cycling and this is for breeding. Um, the plan is to do a lot of breeding in here so that I can 
show you guys how I do that. That's the part of fish keeping this, that most interests me. Um, I've always had a passion for spawning fish and raising up the fry. There's just something magical about it. And um, yeah, so this entire rack is for that. At the moment, I don't have any lights on here. A lot of times when you're breeding fish, you don't want that. Like some, I'm planning on doing some wild type bettas, planning on doing some killifish and things. Um, but I think I will eventually get lights on here that I can turn on when I'm doing a species that can handle it, just because then it will be bit better video for you guys. So you can, you know, see what's going on. Because that's pretty dark. Oh, it's all glare, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, so these are set up. Um, these are set up with matte and filters. I like those, especially for breeding tanks, because then the fry can't get to the drain. The fry aren't disturbed by a bunch of bubbles and things. And the tank space is all usable space in front of that filter. So you, um, I don't know. I find it works really well for breeding. And then in the back of these guys, let me see if. I can show you, there it is, is the, um, the drain tube that comes up from the bottom. I had a heck of a time, I had a real hard time drilling these small tanks without cracking them. I eventually found it works a lot better if I drill the bottom instead of the sides, probably because the bottom is supported on all four sides and so you get less bend when you're trying to drill them. Um, and then also the fancy drill bit I got from Gemco didn't work as well on these. I have a friend in town who's like, oh, it should work fine, what's going on? And I, I couldn't get it to work, I kept breaking tanks. He brought over his bits, $20 at Home Depot, super cheap, worked like a charm. Who would have thunk it? So, um, you know, I spent 70, 80 bucks on the Gemco bits, and they just didn't work well for these small tanks. So, not that they're not good bits, I'm sure they're perfectly fine, but the way I use them, the cheap Home Depot bits ended up working a lot better, at least for the five and a half gallon tanks. Um, I don't know if that's true on the bigger tanks or not, because I haven't had another big tank to drill, but I did crack some big tanks when I was drilling them um, the second time around with the Gemco bit, so I might try next time I do a big tank, and I've got some to do. I do have some to do, I just haven't done them yet. Um, I might try... Um, a cheap Home Depot bit and see if it works better. That being said, I love Gemco. That's the first product I've ever had from them that um, that I, I had any any kind of issue with. And I'm sure the bit's fine. I'm sure it's my fault. I'm new to drilling tanks. I'm sure it's how I used it uh, that was the problem. But the way I do things, those cheap Home Depot bits, man, 20 bucks, did all these tanks. One, one bit and it's not even worn down at all yet. So I think that that's how I'll go in the future. Now let me tell you about the fish I, I've ordered. Um, so let me grab my list. Where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> um, so this order, let me go somewhere with better light too. So that my, my forehead can glow like it should when you're bald. Um, so hopefully this is a little better. Hopefully something like that, yeah. So this order is from Africa. Um, I've always loved killifish. I've kept them for a lot of years, bred a ton of species. I uh, was a member of the AKA when I was like 14. <laughs> um, there's another story about how I got into killifish, but for now I, I love them. And so I found a saurus um, for them in Africa. And so I put in an order. And the good thing is I was able to work with the collector of these fish so that I know the locations. So I have locations on all these killifish. So they are a commercial import, but they're location specific. So that's pretty exciting for me. So let me tell you what they are. The first is Aphiosimian australi, which is uh, the leertail killi. Um, it's a uh, very common, great beginner's fish, but these will be wild fish from Africa. Um, these are from Nigeria. And so hopefully we can, you know, replenish some of the bloodlines that maybe you've got a little inbred. Sometimes when you breed for the oranges and the yellows and the non-spotted and all that, um, we can get a little inbred. And so I think some wild blood would be great. And even if not, I just love the, the wild form of the Aphiosimian australis. So 
I'm excited to get those. The second one is Aphiosimian or Chrome Aphiosimian, depending on who's talking and what time. Um, the Bivitatums, and these will be from Lagos. Um, the Agboa Lagos is where they're from. Lagos is a pretty big area. So these are from Agboa in Lagos. Um, so I'm excited to get those in as well. Um, Bivitatums have been one of my favorite fish of all time for a long time. In fact, my logo, um, if you look, oh, it might not be up right now. Anyway, my logo um, is the silhouette of an Aphiosimian Bivitatum, the fungal location. But, you know, it's still a Bivitatum. So, yeah, I'm really excited to get a bunch of those in. Then Aphiosimian, uh, and this will be a new one for me, is Calierum. Um, I think I said that right, Cali. This is the part of videos where we all feel stupid. Like, there's a lot of scientific names I know, but I, it's hard for me to just read one and get it right the first time because, you know, I'm not Latin. Um, the, the Latin language isn't something that comes intuitively to me. And so, anyway, Aphiosimian Caliurum, we're going with that. Um, but these are from Ogun um, in Nigeria. So I have a location specific on those. Then the Aplocalichthys Myers eye is coming. Um, and those are from Lagos as well. Those are from Ido Ikosi in Lagos. Um, A-D-O-I-K-O-S-I. Ado Ikosi, I guess. Um, then the Aplocalichthys macrothalmus is coming. And this is from, from Ogun in Nigeria from Ibafo is the specific location within Ogun. And then Aplocalichthys spolachin is coming. I'm excited because I've tried to get these many times in the hobby. I've seen them listed a few times and I've tried to get them um, just from wholesalers and they always come in as rice fish. So, but this time, I think they're gonna be the real deal because rice fish are, you know, an, an Asian species. And this is from, right from the collector in Africa. I'm hoping they're actually Aplocalichthys spolachin because that's a fish I've had my eye on ever since I saw a picture of it in um, Jorgen Scheele's um, Rivulus of the Old World, his, his great book from back in the day, which I still have a copy of and I still love and I still look at the pictures. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm excited about that fish. And then we're also gonna get, um, I hope, Epiplades grammare. Um, grammy, I think. <laughs> Epiplades, sorry, G-R-A-H-A-M-I. Grammy, I think. I, you know, these are always named after people and I don't know how to say this last name. But anyway, um, this will be from Lagos, from the Akayo location, A-K-I-O. Um, oops, dropped my paper. So, <laughs> extreme close up. So, <laughs> hopefully I trimmed my nose hairs. So anyway, those are most of the killifish. The last one is one that I love. I've had these in the past. They're fantastic. And it's the Procatopus similis. It's a lamp eye. Um, and it's like Aplocalichthys, those are also lamp eyes. But this one, the Procatopus, they have a lot of color on the body They're, and on the fins. They're just a fantastic fish. They get a little bigger than the Aplocalichthys, and I just think they're stunning. Um, they're a schooling fish, more or less, kind of midwater, upper level. Um, they remind me a lot of, of rice fish, but also of uh, rainbows. They remind me a lot of rainbows. They remind me a little bit of kind of tetras, how they kind of shoal together in the areas of the, of the, um, of the tank that they inhabit. But Procatibus similis, and these are from Port Harcourt in, in Nigeria, in the Rivers State location. So Rivers is the, um, the large state, the province, and then Port Harcourt is the actual collection point. Um, and then in addition to killifish, I'm getting some interesting tetras out of Africa just because I have trouble finding them. So I want to bring them in in case anyone wants them. And maybe it'll be a complete dud. There's probably a reason that they're not brought in a lot. Um, African tetras are perhaps not as well known as the South American tetras. Um, they're just not as common. 
and it might be because people don't like them as much, I don't know. But I'm going to bring them in. Um, and those are going to be Neolibius and Sorgii, which is a cool little tetra. It's called like the African Neon Tetra. Um, when you see pictures of them or see them in stores, the rare occasions you see them in stores or wholesalers tanks, they're just brown duds. But if you get them in a tank with the right parameters and they're comfortable and they color up well, then I, I think they're just gorgeous. So I can't wait to get those in. Um, and then I'm getting a, a Nano Charox in, the Latifasciatus, um, which is kind of a, an elongated tetra, which I've never seen before in person. So I'm going to give them a whirl. We'll see. And then the last one is a um, Ricinus species, a Longipennis, which is, it reminds me a lot of a Congo tetra. Um, it has kind of more of a deeper body like that. And then it has these neat fin extensions on it. So I, not on the caudal like the Congo, but on the dorsal. And you don't see them around much. They get pretty big, full grown, might be four inches, maybe possibly a tiny bit bigger. Um, you know, max capacity, you probably average out three to four inches. But they're a neat fish that you just don't see very often, so that's coming in. And then in addition, I have a couple um, cichlid species I'm excited about. One is a Pelvochromus taniatus, and I should have a specific location on that. I, I don't have it on this paper, but uh, he's getting me the location where he's collecting that. And then the, the other one is one that I've seen videos of, I've seen pictures of, I've never seen in person, but I've, I've wanted to keep for a while. And that's the uh, Chromidotilapia gunthrae which is a biparental mouth brooder from Africa. It's, um, it inhabits the same kind of niche as the geophagus do in South America. So it's a sand sifter. Um, it's a biperennial uh, mouth brooder. Fairly peaceful, kind of the same temperament as maybe a geophagus or a gymnogeophagus. And so um, I'm really excited to get those in. Ted Judy has some video on some uh, Kermit tilapia that he spawned. I think it was the Kingsley Eye is the one he had. Uh, I think. I hope I'm not misrepresenting. Um, and there's some other video out there. And I've just wanted them for a long time. And now here's my chance to get them. So I'm doing that. So the killifish, I, all, I know all those really well. And I'm excited to get them in. The Tetris, some of those are going to be brand new for me. And so I'm excited and nervous. And then the, uh, the cichlids, I, I, I think, are, are fairly well known what, that's, what their care and things is going to be. So, but those, uh, which one? The one that I'm most, uh, the Nanocharax, that tetra, the elongated tetra that is coming in from Africa. That's the one that I've never had, never seen. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I'll have to learn. I, I mean, I've read everything I can find on that fish, but there's not a lot out there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but that's the order, and I'm excited to do it. Right now, um, the paperwork's getting processed, so it can all be done legally and all that. Um, the collector is out collecting the fish. It'll probably take a week, maybe two, before they actually get here. He's got to collect them, put them in his holding facility, and maintain them until he's got all the species and enough to ship it out. But it's going to be, um, for me, a fairly large order. It's nine boxes. It's a lot of fish. And I'm excited about it. So that's the update of the fish room and um, the fish I plan on getting in. And I can't wait to get them in. And I can't wait to get some of them set up for breeding. and. Um, and show them to you guys. So anyway, that's the update. Um, and now I have to clean up because look at this. So this, <laughs> so this is like the aftermath of building. Just all this. This is all this stuff that you know. I cleared everything into my garage. Then I had to clear the stuff from the garage back in here. And now I've got all this stuff in here. So I've got to clear all this out. Luckily, I have all those storage bins I can use. Um, and then there's a bunch of stuff still in the garage, which I need to grab and pull in here and just clean up. So that's where I'm at. I, most of the build is done. Now I've got to, you know, reroute power cords where I really want them to be full time. I've got to... Um, clean up all that junk, I've got to get everything situated, 
Um, I, I got a bunch of live food cultures that are in the mail, so I have to set up a rack for those. I'm getting uh, banana worms and micro worms, and I'll get some fruit flies too, I think. And I'm gonna try to get some of Greg Sage's uh, white worms, the, one that, the ones that can live at room temperature. I'm excited about those. Um, got vinegar eels, um, things like that. So I have to get that all set up and the brine shrimp patching station set up and all that stuff. So I can prep for the fish and prep for breeding them. So a lot of cleanup <laughs> is gonna happen the next couple days, but I'm excited to be at that point. Um, this is, gosh, months and months and months of hard work and it's paying off. Um, started planning this about a year ago well, I've been planning it for years, but I got down and dirty with the planning and sketching out the design and pricing out everything and all that about a year ago. And so it's just very exciting for me that it's finally gonna happen. So anyway, thanks for joining me on this adventure and I will let you get back to your water changes. All right, bye.